Shalom, Shalom. This is Yair David speaking to you from the land of Israel. I represent Brit Am, Hebrew Awareness, Air Movements, Air Movement Researchers. Our movement researchers the whereabouts of the lost ten tribes. We find them amongst Western peoples. The Western nations are the lost ten tribes, or rather, Western and West European nations have within them a significant component from the lost ten tribes of Israel. The nations whom we identify as basically Israelite, or having being curated by Israelites and, a di and still having something of the Israelite character within them and uh, a good portion of their population apparently being descended from Israelites from the Western tribes of Israel. These are the nations of Sweden, of Norway, of Denmark, of Finland, of the Netherlands, Belgium, France, Switzerland, England, Wales, Ireland, Scotland, and Northern Ireland, as well as Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and uh, related nations. These are where we find the lost ten tribes of Israel. We do not say that everyone in those countries is descended from Hebrews, but uh, a significant portion of them are, are so. And we have criteria or yardsticks that enable us to determine if a na certain nation belongs to Israel or not. We use biblical sources, rabbinical sources, historical sources, linguistic sources, sources. Whatever field of study has something to say on the subject, we use it, we study it, we see where there is evidence that is pertinent to our subject and we apply it. It happens that certain countries had Israelites within them for a period of time and most of them moved out. Such a nation is Germany. The other nations are in the same situation. So we have a criteria that help us determine whether a nation is basically of Israelite descent or not. And these uh, criteria, originally there were ten of them, we were using ten uh, cri different criteria, ten different yardsticks. And we came to the realization that they were sometimes somewhat confusing and that these different criteria in some cases overlapped with each other, could be very strong in one case, but less so in another. So we managed to reduce them to seven, seven basic principles. And these basic principles or the seven basic criteria, they tell us whether or not a people belong to Israel or not. And they enable us to work with this and to prove it and to develop our evidence along these lines and to also extend our outreach in this direction. So the criteria that we use, the seven wondrous basic criteria that we uh, employ, they are the blessings, the econ economic and physical blessings as promised to the lost Israelites in Scripture, in the Bible, in the Hebrew Bible. Hebrew Bible promised certain blessings that would come to the lost tribes of Israel as we understand them, and we find them amongst these peoples. We also have other indications of scripture in addition to blessings that, such as geographical locations and so on, which complement them. That is, that is the second point. The third point is the groundwork, historical, archaeological and related evidence, linguistic proofs, mythology and so on, also help confirm the Israelite origin of the peoples in question. And uh, we have Judah an affinity with the Jews, a basic affinity, a relatively lack of of anti-Semitism and uh, certain uh, psychological characteristics of not being anti-Semitic and uh, having a similarity and uh, a liking for, in a basic sense, for the Jewish people. It doesn't mean that because there are cases of anti-Semitism or there were historically, there were acts, deeds done against the Jews in these nations the nations do not belong to Israel. Everything is relative. We also have to take account of historical and cultural and other influences. But we need, on, at an overall level, to find this affinity with Judah in order to accept the reality of these people belonging to Hebrew ancestors. We also have to find that that they were civilized and civilizing on a relative scale. In other words, they had humane values 
They did not oppress their own people. They gave everyone a fair go. Relatively speaking, they were equalitarian. And they also helped other nations and helped uplift other peoples, whether by ruling over them and guiding them or serving as an example for them. They had this attribute of being a civilizing influence. And this was one of the reasons the Lost Ten Tribes went into exile. This is what they were supposed to do. And that they did do it is proof of who they were. I also need to have a, a family connection that where we identify one nation as to our satisfaction having belonged to Asian Israel having been descended to a significant degree from Asian Hebrews. So the other nations also need to be related to them on, on an ethnic and historical level. In other words, one proof uh, reinforces the other. This is the family connection. And they have to have a tribal affiliation. We have to be able to relate the peoples in those regions to at least one of the Israelite tribes sometimes more, and sometimes the identification is straightforward, very very strong, very definitive, and sometimes it's tentative. And there have been cases when we have changed our opinion in this matter, but nevertheless, there has to be something there that enables us to relate the groups that we identify as being Hebrew, as belonging be, as a, emanating from a specific Israelite tribe. So the, those are the seven basic criteria that we use, that we now use, and that we find useful and that work. They actually work. They could have proven themselves time and time again. And from these seven criteria, we also derive beliefs and behavior that are evident and that, and that reinforce them and that reinforce our conclusions. Uh, the blessings uh, lead to belief in God. The need to have a belief in God. Lost Ten Tribes have been blessed with economic and physical blessings as promised to Israel in Scripture. This is proof of the Bible. They need a belief in, in God and a belief in the Bible. As uh, the Bible indicates that the Lost Ten Tribes are in certain regions, and when we prove from other sources that the Lost Ten Tribes indeed are in those regions, this is proof of Scripture. And this strengthens our belief in the Bible, and we need to work towards belief in Scripture and understanding Scripture. And groundwork. Groundwork is the historical, archaeological, linguistic, and mythological and related proofs that show that our conclusions that we have already derived from Scripture that are confirmed by the Bible, that they have secular evidence also strengthens them and enables us to gain a more down-to-earth, one could say, uh, comprehension of them. Biblical knowledge is paralleled by secular sciences. Once we understand both of them, both fields of study, once the Bible is understood well, and secular advancement, as secular sciences, secular revelations are also understood, and we put them together and we find a complementary body of evidence. We also we also find that Judah, the Lost Ten Tribes, are distant brothers to the Jewish people. They need to feel an, a, an affinity with the Jews. And also to support the State of Israel, this is part of what being an Israelite means, what it entails, and it is concern, uh, re related to the future destiny of the Israelite nations. They need it for their own sake. They need to be civilized and civilizing, as it was prophesied that they would be, and on the whole, as they have been, they have to be, help other nations and to be a guiding light to them. And this is what they were sent into exile in order to do, and what they did do. This is also a proof of who they are, according to our understanding of, of biblical sources and also rabbinical commentary on these sources. They need a family connection that will be find one, we have to also be able to relate it to others as they're being related together. And so the Lost Ten Tribes need to, the Lost Ten Tribes need to be positive members of their own community to have a sort of local patriotism, to identify with the people they live amongst, to contribute towards them and to feel an affinity and brotherhood with them. 
and also with other Israelite nations as well as with Judah. This is a family connection. This is an obligation, one could say, Im implied by scripture. And they need uh, tribal affiliation on the individual level. We need to, each one of us needs to somehow or other relate, relate to one or other of these sort of tribes, sometimes several times, sometimes it's a long journey, sometimes you never really know, but usually you can uh, uh, hone it down, you can relate to one or two or three different Israelite tribes who you feel an affinity for, and it may well even be turn out to be mistaken, but on the whole, experience shows us that there's something to it, and that this helps, and that there's a value to this. And through this, through this searching to relate to one another of these Israelite tribes, we also incidentally gain more knowledge of the Bible and the biblical application of tribal membership in general. So this is important and worthwhile. Our organization, our movement, Brit Am Hebrew Awareness, we uh, understand that there are we understand that there are three imperatives, three major imperatives to these studies and to this way of life that it entails. These are belief in the Bible, acceptance of the Jews as Judah, and identifying the lost ten tribes as of specific nations and groups now present amongst Western nations. They are the three, uh, the three conclusions. We need belief in the Bible. We need acceptance of the Jews as Judah. Otherwise, it doesn't work. It's not going to work. It won't. There's nothing to stand on. This is needed. This is imperative. Acceptance of the Jews and Judah. And also, the lost ten tribes. We need to identify and accept this identification of the lost ten tribes being amongst Western nations and to, and to uh, improve our knowledge and the appreciation of this. May the Lord God of Israel bless you. Thank you.